the original peanut butter and jelly, then. But what is that feeling like when you know that it's coming to an end? You know, it's, it's amazing because, you know, you start the years of your career off explosive, athletic, quicker, faster than everyone. And then, you know, later in your years, you know, those things, you know, they go away. But you still have the skill set and you have the experience. But, you know, you have to find a way to connect to the game in a different way. You know, and I remember going to the basket one time and I had it, a <laughs> visual memory of, you know, going to the paint. And I was just like, oh, yeah, I'm about to dunk on this young fella. He's tripping. And, you know, he goes up 12 o'clock. I don't see the rim no more. <laughs> and in my head, I said, I'm about to go up to, you know, a little higher to the 12th story and just, you know, finish over him. But, you know, your, your body just wouldn't let you do it no more. And that's like, you know what? The recovery, the turnaround time, you know, all the effort and bouncing back, it just, it wasn't there no more. Eventually, and you had to have a, a real yeah. conversation with yourself that, you know, it's time. The, the, the tough juices stop flowing? The tough juice stop. I mean, it flows <laughs> internally, but I can't distribute it no more. You I know like what I mean? That. The tough it's, juice it's stop flowing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, though, Coach, is it like as you've watched so many players not only experience this, but perhaps resist it as well? Well, you're, you're afraid because you've been doing this all your life. For me, I didn't make it into the NBA until I was 26. So I'm 39. We're playing in L.A., the Clippers, and I'm guarding Corey Maggette. And I always prided myself on being a tough defender and knowing my scouting report. And you know Corey. He's going right. Yeah, every And time. I knew he was going right, and he was ISOing me on the wing. And my mind was telling me, jump on that right hand. And by the time the message went from my brain to my <laughs> legs, Corey Maggette was gone. <laughs> and then I said, okay, okay, I got to figure it out. So then he takes me into the post. And I was always strong for my size. I used to bench press 360 pounds when I played. And that young boy took me in the post, and he whipped my, can I say this, A-S-S. -S. I think you can and spell so, it, yes. And so after the game, we won the game. <laughs> and I'm sitting in my locker with my head down, and KG, Kevin Garnett, is like, what's wrong with you, old man? I mean, we won the game. I said, KG, did you see that young boy whip me like he did tonight? I said, KG, I knew everything he was going to do, but I couldn't stop it. And at that moment, I realized I wasn't good enough. And I always made a promise to God. Because when you're trying to get to the NBA, playing in the CBA and playing in Europe, uh, you, I made this promise with God. If you ever let me play in the NBA, I will never, ever sit on the end of the bench and take a job from a younger player. Never do that. And at that moment, uh, I knew in that summer, I started to train. Kevin McHale calls me, wanted me to play one more year. I drive to the park where I would do my running, and I couldn't get out the car. And I just sat there and I cried. Because I knew then something I had been doing all my life, going to the gym, going to work out, going to the track, I didn't want to do it anymore. And my body was just tired, and more importantly, my mind was tired. I could always convince my get Once I got my mind right, my body would follow. My mind was right, but yeah. my body was like, it's not happening. I sat in the car and cried, and I knew then, and I called Mac and said, Mac, I just don't have it in me. I, I, I love the game. I just don't have it in me. Because I'm not good enough anymore. I can't guard a guy when I know he's going right. I still can't stop him. So, And, and I kept my promise because I just didn't want to take up a spot and just be a guy in the locker room. I wanted to contribute. And I always said the day that I couldn't contribute to the team on the court, then was, that was going to be the day that I let it go. Yeah, I mean, when you fall in love with the game of basketball and you truly love it, you know, you have that equity in it, that sweat equity in it. It's it's so tough to say goodbye to something like that you actually love. And that, you know, it's, it's been a blessing. It, it For me personally, like, it took me off the streets. Uh, you know, I, it, it made me fortunate enough to provide for, you know, my family and everything. It took me to, all around the world to see amazing things. And, you know, to finally say goodbye to that, it was just like, phew. Yep, I it's always crazy. used to say, I never love anything that can't love me back. Well, basketball loved me. It got me an education. It gave me a good life to provide it for my family, provide it for me. And so I didn't want to disrespect the game by just trying to hang on. But look at you guys now. You're sitting here with me on a Saturday night. Well, we're still on the bus. You figure out how to stay <laughs> on that bus.